Hello students, welcome back to the English class. Today we are going to study Samuel Taylor Coleridge's poem Cristada. Samuel Taylor Coleridge was a romantic poet of early 19th century and among the romantic poet he was the only one who wanted to project both the aspects of nature the benevolent and the malevolent for that reason he explored the mystery of nature through supernatural elements and this class as it is meant for english cc or general so i am not going deep into the analysis of coleridge's supernatural technique nor i am going into the technical aspects of this poem in a very thorough manner rather i am trying to just go through the thematic treatment of coleridge and how the poem is narrating and building up a story so this poem cristabel it is a ballad it is in the ballad form having the four line stanza of alternating rhymes and as you know in a general sense the ballad is a long narrative poem it is a long narrative poem in the folk song tradition where the narrator is a single person it is a single person narrative and it depicts some incidents or personalities of the contemporary significance of a particular society of a particular culture or a particular region and ballad basically deal with the conflict the conflict between the binary powers like good and evil or the nature and supernature or the darkness and the brightness so on and so forth and it also deals with individual society love war natural calamities personal calamities etc so here in cristabel samuel taylor coleridge is trying to depict the most basic concept of conflict between good and evil through two characters who are almost similar in their social status in their beauty or look but they differ completely in their nature so cristabel the protagonist by whose name the whole poem is named she is the only daughter of a baron a noble man that is sir leoline and she is the only daughter of sir leoline and she was born with her mother dead her mother died when she was born and she was a very simple beautiful innocent and benevolent girl and who has great faith in 
religion, society, relationship, humanity, etc. And this poem is divided into two parts, part 1 and part 2, and part every part is accompanied with a conclusion. And in the conclusion, the poet is trying to sum up the thematic concern that already he has narrated. So the first part, we will be dealing it part wise and in this video we are going to exclusively deal with the part 1. So part 1 begins with the presentation of the unusual time and unusual situation. It is in the middle of the night by the castle clock that Christabel is living in a castle with her father and it is the middle of the night by its clock and the owls have awakened the crowing cock and the sound of the owls and the owls are awakening the crowing cock. So from the very beginning in the poem there is an indication of the binary present of good and evil. The cock representing the day or the early morning and the owl representing the night, the darkness. And hark again the crowing cock, how drowsily it crew, Sir Leolin, the baron rich, at this toothless mastic ditch. And it is being narrated that the baron, who is very rich, is having a toothless mastic ditch. He is having a dog which is toothless. That means it is also very old. But from her kennel beneath the rock, she maketh answers to the clock. But with every hour of the striking of the clock, the dog barks, responds. And she maketh answer to the clock four for the quarters and twelve for the hour. And she barks four times for every quarter and twelve times for every hour. So in this way, the poet is creating an atmosphere which is seeming both real and unreal because he is going to treat us with the supernatural element the supernatural both outside and inside the man. And here what we find that in the end of that first stanza is telling 16 such owls not over cloud, some say she sees my lady's shroud. So somewhere the lady's shroud is found. That means this is an indication that this is the castle, this is the midnight and there are certain things happening which can be interpreted in both the ways. And the night is chilly but not dark. It is not a dark night, it is chilly. But why the poet is narrating such a night in the middle of the night? Because our protagonist, Christabel, she has come out of the castle. The lovely lady Christabel, whom her father loves so well, but makes her in the wood so late, a forlorn from the castle gate. She has gone a forlorn away from the castle gate to the wood. And why she has gone there? That she had dreams all Easter night of her own betrothed night that she has been betrothed to a knight, to an adventurous hero, romantic hero and about him she had a dream, therefore she has gone there to the forest not to meet him but to pray to the God, the God of nature because we know nature is the primary source of our faith 
and it is the beginning of all religious faith. So she is going there because she is subscribing both to the religion of Christianity as well as the paganism, the pagan spirits. So she is going there to pray. And the lady sprang up suddenly, the lovely lady Christabel. It moaned as near as near can be. So she is going there. She is praying under an oak tree. But suddenly there is the moaning sound. Someone is moaning. And she is surprised. So she goes to the other side of the oak tree. On the other side it seems to be of the huge broad breasted oak, old oak tree. So the old oak tree which is very broad, which is very huge and old, just the opposite side she goes there and there what she discovers. <clears throat> there is not wind enough to twiddle the one red leaf, the last of its clan that dances as often as dance it can, hanging so light and hanging so high. So the poet is creating a magic atmosphere, a mysterious atmosphere where he is describing about a red leaf, the last leaf in the tree which is dancing in the air and hanging high. But Christabel is going to inquire exactly what from where the morning sound is coming. And she is praying to Lord Jesus and Mother Mary to seal her well. What sees she there? There she sees a damsel bright dressed in a silken robe of white. So there she is finding to her utter surprise that a beautiful lady who is dressed in a silken robe of white silken robe is there sitting on the ground and she is making all these moaning sounds she is in some misery her stately neck and arms were bare her blue veined feet on sandaled wear and from her physical appearance the poet is narrating that she is having a stately neck that means she definitely belongs to a noble family, a rich family. She is not an ordinary damsel. And the gems entangled in her hair. So the gems are entangled in her hair. That means she is very rich and beautiful exceedingly. She is not only rich, not only young, but exceedingly beautiful. The lady strains made answers meet, and her voice was faint and sweet. She was also speaking in a very sweet voice. And what she said to Christabel's enquiry? Christabel inquired about her, and she is telling, My sire is of a noble line. Sire means father. My father is from a noble line, and my name is Zaraldine. She is introducing herself as a noble lady coming from a noble family. Her father is a noble man and her name is Geraldine. And she is also informing five warriors seized my Esther Mont, me even, even me a maid forlorn. So five armed people, they kidnapped her, they seized her somewhere and took her into this forest and for some mysterious reason they have left her there and they discussed that they will be coming back to pick her up but they have not come and she had been there for all this day and evening therefore she is making these miserable sounds then Christabel stretched forth her hand and comforted fair Geraldine. Oh well, bright dame, may you command the service of Sir Leoline. 
So Christabel is a very simple girl, a virtuous girl, a benevolent one. So immediately she extended the hand of cooperation and she is telling, don't worry. Now, from now you are under the benevolence of Sir Leoline. You are under the protection of Sir Leoline. That means my father Sir Leoline, who is a baron, he will be there to protect you or you will be under his protection. She rose forth that which steps they passed that stroke to be and were not past her gracious task, the lady blessed and thus spake on sweet Christabel. And the lady was very thankful to Christabel. She blessed Christabel. She rose from her position of sitting on the ground and stood. And Christabel carried her along to the castle. They crossed the moat and Christabel took the key that fitted well. A little door she opened straight, all in the middle of the gate. So after crossing that one furlong of distance from the wood to the castle, go castle gate through a moat, the reached there and Christabel opened a small gate within the main gate by her key and they entered where soldiers always keep guard but now that it is midnight probably the soldiers were not there. The lady sang belike through pain, and Christabel with might and men lifted her off a weary weight over the threshold of the gate. But when they are entering into the campus, through the gate, into the castle, through the gate, suddenly the lady sat down as if she was in great pain, and Christabel helped her by raising her in her arms and making her cross the gate. This is an important point in the poem because this is the first sign that the poet is giving the reader the idea that this lady Geraldine who is accompanying Christabel to the castle is probably having some other problems in her body or mind. Therefore, as soon as she has to cross the threshold of the gate, she suffered from pain or she sat down. But when Christabel took her to the other side of the gate, suddenly the lady rose again and moved as she were not in pain, as if nothing happened. So why this mysterious thing happened? That when she is at the gate, threshold of the gate, she suffered pain. But as she was helped by Christabel to cross over it, again she was moving very well and fine without having a pain. Similarly, they were moving, but I cannot speak for weariness, so free from danger, free from fear, they crossed the court right glad they were. And Christabel was looking at Geraldine, what happened? Because this is the sudden change in her body and Christabel couldn't comprehend what happened. But Christabel can't know. Geraldine is also telling that I can't say what happened to me at that moment. But free from danger and free from fear. I don't have any fear now. No risk. Outside her kennel, the mastiff old lay fast asleep in moonshine cold. The mastiff old didn't awake, yet she an angry moan did make. And when they were crushing the kennel, the old mastiff, the toothless mastiff, though it was in her sleep, but she moaned. So this is a second sign in the poem where the poet is indicating that there is something mysterious with Geraldine. That as Geraldine was crossing that kennel with Christabel in her sleep, the dog moaned, though the dog had only to respond to the castle bell or the castle clock. 
and this table was also surprised what happened and she thought probably mastiff had the dream of the owl screech or she had heard the owl screech they pass the hall that echoes still pass as lightly as you will the brands were flat the brands were dying amid their own white ashes line and that comes the third incident when they were passing through the hall in the fireplace the brands or the burning logs they were almost dying but as soon as they went there suddenly the brands were having bright fire and a tongue of light a tongue of light a feet of flame and christabel saw the lady's eye and nothing else saw there by and christabel saw the hall was quite dark except the dying light and suddenly the light flickered in the dying ashes of the burning logs and the eyes of geraldine they were born so this is the third sign that there is something mysterious with this lady because all these things are happening which are unusual for christabel then christabel is advising geraldine that her father sweet christabel her feet doth bear and jealous of the listening air they steal their way from stairs to stair now in glimmer and now in gloom so now they are crossing the room of baron sir leolin and already christabel had advised geraldine that my father sir leolin she sleeps very in a difficulty because he having she, he is having some problem of his age probably therefore we should not disturb him so they have crossed the room in tiptoe in silence the moon shines dim in the open air and not a moonbeam enters here but they without its light can see the chamber carved so curiously and now they are entering into the chamber of crystal and the room is also quite dark is though not exactly dark the moonbeam is filtering into the room and within the room there is also a light hanging from the chain and crystalline crystal enters and raises the light and as soon as the silver lamp is raised by crystal let it swing to and fro and the light the lamp moved in the chain to and fro while geraldine in wretched plight sank down upon the floor below the fourth incident happened that geraldine immediately behaved like a wretched creature as if suffering extremely and sat down on the floor oh weary lady geraldine i pray you drink this cordial wine so christabel feels for her and immediately offers her the wine made from wild flower which was the recipe of her mother to make her feel comfortable because christabel thinks that geraldine is suffering from fatigue or maybe hunger or anything because she was there all throughout the day and night in the forest but geraldine is asking her will your mother pity me who am a maiden most forlorn christabel answered who is me she died the hour that i was born and christabel very faithfully very innocently sat with her her life her past 
how her mother died and in this way she wanted to befriend Geraldine to make her comfortable but what we find in Geraldine there is an altered voice after listening to that her voice changes Soon with altered voice said she of wandering mother pick and pine I have power to bid thee flee alas what ails poor Geraldine she is telling I will bid thee mother that means she knows that Geraldine is under the protection of the spirit of her mother and Geraldine believes so therefore Geraldine is so comfortable. She goes to the forest in the middle of the night because she feels she is in the protection of her mother's spirit as well as the spirit of Jesus and Mary. But now Geraldine is telling to herself that I will bid you mother off. That means she will bridge that safety and security of Gerald Christabel from her mother's protection. And why with hello voices cries she of woman of this hour is mine though thou her guardian spirit be of woman of it is given to me. She is telling no you can't be with your daughter now this hour belongs to me I have seized upon it. That means now we come to realize that Geraldine is not a good woman. She is an evil woman or she may be a spirit. Therefore, she had reacted differently to the dog, to the light, to the fire, to the threshold of the gate because she is not a real woman. She is a spirit. She is a supernatural. She is a paranormal woman. So, she is now claiming that she is the mistress of Christabel. Therefore, she wants to come in between the protection of her mother's spirit and her. Then Christabel knelt by the lady's side and raised to heaven her eyes so blue. And alas, said she, lastly, right, dear lady, it hath wildered you. But Christabel is innocent. Christabel is not in knowledge of anything. And innocently she is telling, O oh lady, you are excited now so let us retire to the bed you can take my bed you can sleep there with me because it is already night middle of the night and she can arrange another room without disturbing anyone and then Geraldine is asking her do you believe that there is God. She is telling, all the who live in the upper sky do love you, holy Christabel, and you love them, and for their sake and for the good which me befell, even I in my degree will try for maiden to requite you well. But now unrobe yourself, for I must pray, aid it in bed I lie. So Zeraldine is telling that. You believe in all the gods in the sky and you are holy Christabel, you are a very holy creature, you are a holy soul and whatever I may try, I may not possess you but now you unrobe, you go to bed, I will have my prayer. So Christabel immediately goes to the bed. And after that, the lady also on ropes. Beneath the lamp, the lady bowed and slowly rolled her eyes around, then drawing in her breath aloud, like one that shuddered she unbound. The cincture from the beneath her breast, her silken robe and inner vest. And she looks around as if she is afraid of someone or she is taking stock of everything in the room then she starts undressing and by undressing what appears her silken robe and inner vest drop to her feet and full in view behold 
her bosom and half her sight, a sight to dream of, not to tell. The poet is telling, behold, it is a wonderful sight. Her bosom and half her sight, only she is visible from half her sight to the vision of the poet. And the poet is telling, a sight to dream of, it is a dream-like sight, not to tell, it cannot be described. O oh, sealed her, sealed sweet Christabel, the feather that is the most beautiful body of spirit or it is having the horrible part of a spirit. The poet is not giving any clue, but the poet is telling, sealed her, sealed sweet Christabel. Christabel is in danger. She must be protected. Yet Geraldine nor speaks nor stays, a heart stricken look was hers. Deep from within she seems halfway to leap some weight with sick essay. And Geraldine is behaving in a very strange manner, as if some sickness has entered into her. And with low voice and doleful look, this world did say, in touch of this bosom, there worketh a spell, which is lord of thy utterance, Christabel. And she is going to the bed, she is embracing Christabel like a child, but she is telling Christabel, when you touch my breast, a spell will be cast. And because of that, thou knowest tonight will know tomorrow. This mark of my shame, this seal of my sorrow, but vainly thou worest, for this is alone in thy power to declare. That you will know about me tonight and also tomorrow, that there is a mark of my shame. In my body, there is the mark of my shame. That means, she is not a good woman, she is not a natural woman, she is having something with her, which is cast in her body, is an evil woman. She is an evil spirit. But she is telling, you will know everything, Christabel, but because of my spell, you won't be able to tell it, share it. Thou hadest a low moaning and found it the bright lady surpassingly fair, and didst bring her home with thee in love and in charity to seal her and shelter her from the damp air. So in this way, she gets united with Christabel. Christabel is bright, holy, and Geraldine is described as a damp. Then the conclusion to the part one. In the conclusion, the poet is summing up all these things. But with the finishing, fearfully, fearfully dreaming it, I wish, dreaming that alone which is of sorrow and shame. Can this be she, the lady who knelt at the old oak tree? That the poet is wondering, is this the same lady who is sleeping with Christabel in this bed in such a manner? Is this the same lady who was there at the oak tree? So miserable so polite, but here she is so assertive and she is dominating over Christabel. And see, the Lady Christabel gathers herself from out her trance, her limbs relax, her countenance grows and soft, the smooth thin leads close over her eyes and tears, she says. Then we find Christabel as if in the sleep, is interacting with this lady and she is coming out of her trance, the spell, and in a relaxed countenance, but there is sadness and softness within her. And large tears that leave the lashes bright. She is also crying, there are tears. And often the while she seems to smile as infants at a sudden light. And she is also behaving in a strange manner. Tears are dropping from her eyelashes, but at the same time she is also smiling. 
Yeah, see that smile and see that weep like a youthful hermitess, beauteous in a wilderness, as if she is in a wilder state. Who praying always prays in sleep, and if she move unquietly, perchance. But this she knows in joys and woes that saints will aid if men will call, for the blue sky bends over all. So something transpires in the night, in the bed, between Geraldine and Christabel. And Christabel is both sad and happy. Probably she is sad for that experience with Geraldine. But she is also happy or smiling or assured that any time she will be praying to the God, to her mother, the God will respond because the blue sky is over all. So in this way, the part one of the poem has come to a conclusion. And today we are going to stop here. You try to analyze this poem here. In this part, the poet is simply introducing the evil, the complexity of the evil through Geraldine and contrasting it with the goodness of Christabel. So that is all. Thank you.